Hello, this is Ari Wickes for the Yeshiva League Pass tip-off show, and we are doing our Instagram Live. We have a special guest today, the one, the only, Johnny Dan of Valley Torah High School, who had just won the MVP for Sarachek, had one of the most iconic plays you will see in Yeshiva basketball history, and he's going to be joining us in a minute. We're going to bring him on, and uh, we'll get to it, and we'll get with some questions. Just waiting for him to get on. All right, he's coming on. One sec. There he is. Johnny, how are you? Welcome to the program. I'm doing great, Baruch Hashem. How are you? Excellent, excellent. So first of all, it looks like you are, uh, I'm assuming you're back in California already? Yeah, yeah, we got back last night. Nice, nice. Excellent. So you had a the trophy ride home with the, they had an extra seat on the plane for the, uh, the big trophy you guys brought back to Cali? Oh, yeah, the trophy had a whole seat for itself. It was amazing. All right. Well, let's get into it. First of all, congratulations. Obviously, a huge season, the culmination at Sarachek, winning the tournament, the MVP. We'll get into – there was that highlight real play I think you might remember from yesterday. We'll, we'll talk about that. But tell us about – I know you had a historic season for, uh, for Valley Torah in California. You guys went deep into your state playoffs. How was the season? What were your expectations coming into it after, you know, not playing that much last year? And, uh, you know, take us through that a little. You know, beginning of the season, I didn't know if we were going to go far. I didn't really know if we were going to be that good. But, you know, every practice we just kept working. Every practice we made a goal to just work as hard as possible. And, uh, yeah, we know in, in the state run, we made it really deep. We just said we had nothing to lose, so let's just go and play the hardest we can. And we we got very far, and, yeah. Right. Well, well, talking about, you know, I was at Sarachek and you know, I was able to witness, you know, a lot of the uh, the greatness of not just you, your team, your coaching staff. You also had a pretty big fan there, uh, Terrell something. Ryan Terrell, I think, was uh, propelling you guys, you know, just as me, he was on the court as, as he does off the court. Um, mm -hmm. So your style of play, right, it's not something that a lot of teams have seen. I mean, to play for Coach Schwartzberg, is that the, the I pronounce it properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to play for him, you obviously got to be in tip-top condition. You guys are – it's like the old UNLV days. You guys are pressing, you know, the entire game up and yeah. down. You know, you're at the top of that press. You know, did that style – is that something that he plays accustomed to the way you guys play, or is that the, just the, the style that he goes with and you guys adapted? Yeah, I mean, I mean, since the beginning of the year, every practice we've been doing, like, six, seven teams every single practice. So after every single drill, it just says get on the line and – we just do 17, so basically all practice. So we're all in tip-top condition. We're all in shape, and we like to press. We like to get after every single play, and we love we love to do that. Right, yeah, you can see that. I mean, you guys are all up and down the court. Yeah. Also, I just want to – is it true that all of you guys, for, for me, at least for the people who are in the rotation, they're all underclassmen? There's no seniors on the team as far as, you know, guys who are playing in the, in the game? Well, we have – Three, we have three seniors on the team, uh, David Paz, Daniel Hirsch, and Yoshi Margarefta. Gotcha. Okay, so I have to get with my research committee, so it might have been a little off. So coming coming into Sarachek, right, you had that great run in L.A. Uh, in, I'm sorry, in California. You don't really play Charles Hevitt. I know there's like a rivalry, but for some reason it's kind of uh, – you know, been on hiatus for whatever that is. So, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't play a lot of the teams that, you know, who in Globerman or any of the Yeshiva League teams like that. So what was the mentality coming into uh, Saracek? Were you like, we need to prove ourselves to everyone because people don't really know how good we are? And, uh, you know, take us through that and, you know, how you stay motivated for it. You know, we came to this tournament, you know, we really wanted to prove to everybody that we're the best Jewish team in the nation. And so every single game, we really had to, we really had to show, we had, we had to show something. And uh, yeah, we took it personal. A lot of people were trash talking us, saying we're overrated. And uh, yeah, as soon, as soon as we walked in on Thursday, we heard, we overheard a bunch of people saying that we're ranked too high, we're overrated, and uh, we just took it personal. Right. Well, it's it's funny, and that's it's all it's all love and respect, right? Because these are all kids who are who are just, you know, they all think they're the great at, at what they do. And they, you know, just don't know you guys because of, yeah. you know, the West Coast bias, I guess. But, you know, you did go through four Yeshiva League teams. I believe you started with uh, MTA, the host school. You took care of them. Then you took care of Maggie and David, who uh, had beaten Ramaz, uh, the Yeshiva League champions. And then you <laughs> took care of TABC and then ultimately DRS. So if there's any questions, I mean, you you, you didn't have an easy path to the championship. That's oh, for not, sure. not So all. first – yeah, how, how was the uh, Sarachek experience, you know, just being there for the first time? And, you know, how was it taking that all in? 
Oh, being at Sarah Chick was a was an amazing experience. You know, I, I was a uh, when I was a freshman, I was a week away from going, and I was so excited. And then COVID happened, and I thought I would have it the next year, but then there was there was not really a season the next year. So I've been waiting so long to finally go to Sarah Chick, and just the whole experience was amazing. Just like being being with my whole teammates, like seeing all the teams at the hotel, and just like playing at YU in that atmosphere with those crowds, and it was just amazing. Right. No, it was. And again, it was it was it was packed. It was jammed out. Everyone was was into it. Um, tell us tell us about was there one team in particular you were hoping to face in, in the tournament or you were just like, you know, any and all comers, you just you'd be happy to play whoever was there. Uh, not really. You know, we, we, we didn't really have like one team. Our goal was just to win a championship. We didn't really care who we're playing, what when we're playing. We just wanted to win a championship. All right, it makes sense. So tell me before we get into the the, the block, as it's known as uh, in in Jewish basketball lore, tell us about how it is having you know Ryan Terrell. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming he might be a little bit of a mentor to you. Obviously, your team. He was on the bench. I mean, he was pumped. You know, he was actually. I was talking to him before one of the games, and you would think that he was about to play. I mean, he was into it. He was game planning, and uh, you know, how is that having you know arguably the greatest Jewish ball player? You know, in right now for sure, but in history of of Jewish ball, you know, rooting you guys and, you know, guiding you through it. Oh, it's amazing. Having Ryan on the bench is just a blessing. You know, he gets us so hyped before the games. You know, he's always giving us advice, always tips. And he just it's, it's great to have him on the bench always, always bringing up the energy. Right. And plus, plus you get his mom, his brother, the father. I mean, the whole, the whole mishpacha, you know. They're... The whole mishpacha in the, in the student section is, is amazing. Right, it is. You guys had a great crowd. So now let's get to the uh, the championship game. I mean, it, it wasn't. It was you know almost a little over twenty four hours ago. You're playing DRS, which is a phenomenal team. You know they had a great season themselves. They have a great crowd. You know they travel. You know if you've been to at DRS, wherever you go, their fans are there. So the place is rocking. You guys come out strong. You go. You go up, and then all of a sudden DRS. You know they're like the team that never quits. They got a great coach, great system. They're coming back. I think you guys were up by 16, and they went on a 15 nothing run. And Ari Ivory, a great player who's been on, on the show with us here, you know, really guiding their coming comeback. All of a sudden, he he's, has the ball. Actually, actually, I'm sorry. You had the ball. He comes and he picks your pocket. And he's going in. They're down. It was 44-43, right? He's going in for a layup. You know, this is all of a sudden, if you look at, at the replay, he's at the foul line. I believe you're at half court. And this is obviously reminiscent of LeBron, the chase down against Golden State, right? I mean, you might have got up a little higher. That's the only difference. But what was the mentality on that? Going, you know, to block it, not foul, and just most importantly for kids out there, never to give up on the play. Yeah, you know, we, we were up by one. This was a crucial play. You know, no one gave me a pass on top of the key. It was for me to attack when I get it on the free throw line. But if we came from behind, I didn't see him. He tipped it out and... He's a great player. You know, he sprinted all, he sprinted down the court. And I knew every possession is huge here. This could be the game-changing play. They had the momentum. They had, like, a 15-0 run. So I just, like, the, I just went as hard as I can, and I tried to block that shot. I jumped as high as I can, and luckily I got it. Yeah, I mean, there was a little more than luck involved in that. But like I said, I, I, was, I was in the arena when that happened. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a young man, but I, like, jumped out of my seat, you know, did one of the tackles of the persons next to me. I mean – it, it was riveting. I mean, it was amazing. Not only that, then, then I believe it was uh, Noam, number three, your point guard, yeah, comes yeah. down, makes the pass to, to Paz, I believe his name, in yeah, the corner. David Paz. Right. Knocks down a shot. I mean, crazy. a money shot, which, you know, like, hits it. The place is going crazy. Everyone thinking that's it. But then you have the wherewithal to come and you steal the ball again. And then you go in and, yeah. and you, you t really turn it around and take a, a, what could have been a one-point deficit. It was really a seven-point swing. What was that moment like when they called timeout and you were able to, you know, I don't know if you were, were in the moment, were able to realize, you know, what was going on? It, like, it was unbelievable. Everything happened, like, so fast. Like, yeah, as you said, like, it could have been like a one. We could have been down by one, and all of a sudden we're up by, by like, six. And it was just, like, the energy and, like, it was a championship game with, like, a minute to go, knowing that, like, we could bring this home our first ever school, it was just, it was insane. After David Paz hit that shot and I got that steal, like just looking at our crowd, it was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, and actually interestingly enough, I mean, Ryan, and this was your first, um, the school's first Sour Jack title in the history. And Ryan said, 
you know, I think he said he was there four years and he never got one. So Saracek, you know, these are not easy titles to come in five games in five days, four games yeah. in five days, depending on how, how it breaks out. I mean, it's, it's, it's a title that you're obviously very proud of. So how was it? I don't know if this is true. I saw a video with, with, with nowadays, you never know if it's true or not. I saw something where your steel was being watched back home at Valley Torah in, in one of the classrooms. And it was a base manager, a classroom, one of those things. And yeah, it was, you see the, was that was that a real video that was out? Yeah, it was a base manager. Whenever there's Sarachek or like or like any basketball tournaments, the whole school gathers in the base manager and they all watch it. They all go crazy. Right, and, and I've heard the Valley Tower base managers rocks, and, and and no matter what, but during a basketball game, I'm sure it's uh, it's oh, even yeah, a, yeah. It's another level. It, it's it's insane. It's right. insane. It, it was great. So you you come into school today, obviously feeling like you know the the great superstars you are, and and again, this was a team effort. I mean, seeing you guys. Just, you know, there's so many different weapons. You have, uh, you know, the shooters, you know, the, the point guards, the bench, the coaching, and obviously the fans. It's really a powerhouse. And, uh, you know, congratulations on a wonderful, wonderful season. I don't know if you have any shout outs. I mean, I don't usually do this, but after kind of being uh, the witness to uh, what happened yesterday, you know, if you wanted to thank anyone or shout out to any of your uh, friends or family, you know, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just want to shout out the whole school, shout out the whole rabbis, you know, shout out all my friends at Valley Torah. This championship was for you guys. All right. Well, there you go. Johnny, thank you for joining us. Hatzlacha and the rest of your career. And uh, look forward to seeing you back at Saracek and many more tournaments down the road. Thank you so much. All right. And take care. Have a great night. All right, thank you.